Hey there, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster of Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. This is episode, um, oh, what is it, 25? 25, the Christmas episode. And uh, seems kind of fitting. So there you go. We are going to talk about Christmas decor today. And we have a couple guests coming on the show. So we are going to have Darren Cunningham from Urban Timber come on. We'll talk a bit about mantles and their stick wood product and floating shelves and various reclaimed wood products because I think that's something that really contributes, um, in my opinion, to the look of a nice Christmassy home. And then also we're going to have um, Rosalind Lazaruk come on from Wicked Blue Design and Tipsy Palm and she's going to talk more specifically about Christmas decor. So we'll talk first with, um, with Darren. And then we'll, about halfway into the show, we'll uh, transition to chatting with, with Rosalind a bit more about uh, decor specific stuff here. So, so Darren Cunningham, him and Leanne, they own Urban Timber. Uh, it's a great local shop. They've been at it for about 10 years now. Um, Urban Timber ta- is a small local business. It takes pride in quality and craftsmanship of their reclaimed furniture and specialized wood products. So I can see Darren's there lurking in the background. So I'm going to in and we'll talk a bit about um his stuff and we'll kind of show you how it fits in with christmas decor aha there he is how you doing good i'm having a little bit of audio trouble here let me uh i can't i can't hear you oh yeah let me just okay see. okay no now i can't all right there you go okay welcome okay like electronics aren't my uh my strong suit paul so it's all good you got to make a recla- reclaimed wood phone that'll be I- Solution. I like that beard. How how long are you in on that beard? Oh, I don't know. I grow it every winter. I just had yeah. it trimmed. I, had, I hit my barber up before he had to close, and he took a bit off. It yeah, got a little bit unruly, but uh, yeah. yeah, it looks good. Thanks, man. It's going white. I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I, I know mine too. You can't fight it. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So I was thinking about the Christmas episode, what we should talk about, and then. I was looking at some pictures from our projects and I was like, man, I sure love the look of a, a cabin and all this stuff at Christmas. We love to go to the mountains for Christmas. It's not happening this year, but, and it got me thinking a bit about what you guys do and I'll pull up some pictures here and we can talk a bit about, and obviously mantles and your stick wood and things aren't designed for specifically Christmas, but I do think it happens to be something nice to chat about. Um, and Let's see here. Bear with me. I'm just looking for one of these images that you sent over. Got a whole bunch here. I pulled up some stuff too. But so here's a shot of some of your stick wood. And I mean, it's a, it's such a beautiful touch for a room. And, you know, obviously this looks great with the star on it and Christmas themed. But needless to say, it looks awesome all the time, not only at Christmas. And let's talk a bit about this product because I know it's been flying off the shelves for you guys. And let's talk about like how it's made, um, how it's installed, and all that stuff about it. Because I think it's really, really a great product. And I think it, you know, could certainly um, make someone's face look awesome if they ought to. Right. Yeah. No, it is um, it is our best-selling product at Urban Timber. We've had um, Canadian distribution on it for close to eight years now. And, um, you know, it talk about consistency like that's what you love as uh, as a retailer is having a, a product that that's got uh, a lot of consistency it doesn't get returned a lot like I think we've had in uh, eight years I think we've had uh, maybe one or two returns and and that was because they they weren't putting it on a surface uh, that stick wood actually was designed for so every other time that it's used properly on a, on a painted wall surface um, it's it's a basically a hundred percent satisfaction. So we uh, that's why we love the product. But it's also um, amazing because you'll see a lot of different wall treatments out there. You can go to you know Home Depot or Lowe's, and they've got you know a variety of different types of wood that you can put on walls. But what is really cool about stick wood is that it's um, it's a hundred percent made out of real wood, not. Uh, you know, not uh, fabricated wood made in China. It's it's made out of real reclaimed wood off of barns, and uh, and even some of the more modern styles that they have, those are made from the inside cuts 
of, of the barn wood. So everything is completely sustainable and reclaimed. Nice. Yeah, stuff's awesome. Uh, we have a couple of jobs coming up where we're going to use that product in a couple of bathrooms that we're doing. And I guess on that note, like, are there any limitations within where it can be installed? And do you need to worry about care or sealing it, anything like that? Yeah, like we, we have like people add it into uh, bathrooms and powder rooms all the time. Uh, the only place that we that we don't recommend it goes into is like if you have a, a closed bathroom with a closed shower, you know, um, yeah. where there's a lot of steam and humidity. Obviously, uh, the wood's going to maybe take on a little bit of a life of its own. But so we recommend it not to be in those situations. But people use it all the time for kitchen backsplashes. Um, it depends on the style. But if you get more of like a, a rugged style like this, yeah. um, you can put on just a, a clear uh, water-based poly coating. And then you can wipe it down if you get any uh, water or grease on it. So it's pretty user-friendly. Yeah. And the profile, as you can see, is, is super thin. Yeah. It's three sixteenths of an inch, and then it's got the three M peel and stick on the back, and so the, and the other Crazy. really rad thing, yeah, it, it comes in um, uh, packs are are one to four foot lengths pre cut, so you don't have to cut every single piece to make a pattern on your wall. Yeah, right. Nice. Yeah, that stuff's awesome. Um, I forgot to talk a bit about a giveaway item, and instead of bugging you for one, I thought of. Uh, my dad has a little company called Foster's Custom Woodworks and uh, Woodcraft, sorry. And he made up some charcuterie boards for me this year. We're giving away some of our clients, our, you know, and I had, I had one left over. Here it is at the shop. And my dad actually made this out of, um, he likes to, I don't reclaim, but he'll reuse and recycle wood products all the time. So there's a little bit of hardwood flooring mixed in here. And uh, this one, I believe, is walnut and acacia. So we'll give this thing away as a giveaway draw today. To be entered in the draw, just enter a comment. Could be a high five, could be a Merry Christmas, could be an educated question you're gonna ask Darren or I of for their products. Whatever you put in, you're entered for the draw at the end of the show. And then later on, we're going to have Rosalind and she has got a giveaway item as well. So a little shout out to my dad and his little one man show, Foster's Custom Woodcrafts. Um, He's good at what he does. He's an old cabinet maker from back in the day, and he's just now kind of on his hobby years, just loves making stuff. So it's it's pretty cool to see what he comes up with. So It's anyway, a beautiful piece. Um, for anybody just joining the show, this is the Art of Renovation Live. I'm talking with Darren Cunningham from Urban Timber about, well, it's the Christmas episode, and we're talking about their products and what it can do f to add to the Christmassy look of your home, right? So let's talk about mantles. Because I know that mantle, that's kind of a key thing. You know, generally you're hanging stockings off them. And we'll talk a bit about some of your products. And you sent me a couple of nice pictures here. I got a bunch of mantle shots. So I'm sorry if some of these aren't yours, Darren. But uh, I think it still lends to the conversation. Uh, just looking for them here. Bear with me. So as far as your mantles go, like typically, I, mean, I know you use reclaimed timber. So where, where do you find most of your wood for these things? Yeah, I mean, our, our wood comes from, uh, literally comes from all over North America, just depending on, on what you want. Uh, we do everything from, you know, a lot of local reclaimed wood from, from old grain elevators. We get a lot of wood out of grain elevators. Um, and then basically from there, we can take and we can apply different coatings uh, to protect the mantles. Uh, or uh, we can do different color stains if you want different tones. And then some of the some of the really wild stuff that we get um it's called hand hewn mantles and those are from old um old beams out of old barns and buildings that were originally logs where the farmer took an axe and uh actually turned them into square beams from uh from chiseling them out it's wow. and all the joinery like all the dovetail joinery that's all done by hand about we figure between 150 to 200 years ago. So those are, those are something really special. And most of them, uh, because we get them from, from the Eastern United States and Eastern Canada. Uh, most of those are made from, uh, from white Oak. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful stuff. And there's different ways you can install them. Like here's a couple of shots. These are unfinished, obviously the, the renovation itself, but you can see this mantle. This is one of yours. And we've right. extended it right across that opening that runs behind, I'm assuming, a bookshelf or something of that nature. And you can install them in, in different ways. And 
you know, I guess if you're considering buying a mantle from, from Darren and you want to have it installed, you need to think a bit about how you're going to install it and, and is your space currently finished or not? Because we can't put backing in easily if you already have a tiled or stone clad in fireplace chase, right? And there's different options for brackets you can use. And it depends on the look that you want um, from, from your mantle, right? Some people are not into seeing brackets, while others certainly are. So I think it's something that, you know, you need to just think about when you're buying it. And um, yeah, as far as the look that you want, how it ties in with your your finishings and furniture, those are all things to consider when you're shopping for one. Um, but it's a, it's a nice touch. And here, obviously, these aren't showing you too much about a Christmassy theme, but these are just some examples of the different types of mantles that we've installed over the years. Um, a bunch of these are from Urban and uh, some of the March. This is one that we had, we custom made out of some timbers uh, for a client. And we did kind of a fancy little joinery uh, joint on it so it kind of jumped out but again use them how you want to but they're great when it comes to you know for to, for decorating and again we've, we've sold it's funny paul like we've you never know the trends uh during a pandemic because <laughs> we've never gone through one but i mean um i i got a buddy who knows one of the guys that owns arctic spas and apparently they're three thousand hot tubs on back order um so I mean, but for us, it was um, stick wood and mantles. Uh, we could not keep mantles in stock over the last 10 months. Uh, I think everybody was just sitting at home watching their TVs and looking at their fireplace and going, maybe we should dress this up a bit. And it, it certainly is a wonderful way to add some character to any room is, is, to, is to put a nice, chunky, beef, beefy piece of wood above your uh, fireplace. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I guess, a classic look. And, you know, it can be done with like, live edge. It can be clean. It depends on what you want, right? So I would say go check out Urban Timber. You, you know, you're not going to probably get one installed this year before Christmas at this point. Um, you never know, right? But um, go check them out. And it's something to think about for next year, right? We're all getting to spend a lot more time on our homes now. And it's a matter of figuring out, you know, what we want our home to look like and how it reflects us. So... Yeah, so yeah we've got we have a sorry we have a few clients in the in the showroom right now, so I'm kind of hiding out in our back area. But um, <laughs> uh, we do have uh, a number of mantles in stock. We just we filled the racks here last week, and so we do have some cash and carry mantles in stock if they are looking for something before Christmas. And um, of course, we uh, we highly recommend um, uh, Paul for for install if if that's something that you're not comfortable with doing. Because it isn't really as simple as just pe putting a piece of wood up on a wall. I mean, you, you really have to do it properly to make sure that, that it's level and it, it, uh, it ends up uh, lasting few, uh, through a few Christmases. So Absolutely. And I would say that, you know, it becomes, like I mentioned earlier, especially more challenging if you already have a pre-finished fireplace chase, right? Because now we have to figure out how we're going to mount it over top of tile, perhaps, how we're going to drill through it, and what it's going to fasten to. The minute you start loading up your stockings on that thing, uh, you're going to your fireplace chase. So um, if you need a hand, if, you, if you're planning to buy one and install it yourself and you're not too sure about what to do, then call my office, ask for me. I'll give you a couple of pointers. And if we're able to, we can, uh, we can send out one of our carpenters to give you a hand if needed. It's a little touch and go going into people's houses right now, as you know, but um, worst case scenario, I could do a video call with you to help give you a little bit of coaching. I'm happy to help out where I can, so don't be shy. Um, here's a couple of your cichlid shots I forgot to pull up earlier. Um, again, can be used in so many different ways. It really adds some character to a space, so um, really is a beautiful product. We've got a few comments here i'm just going to read out tipsy palm she'll be on the show a bit later love the open shelves tied into the mantle love this look yeah lots of love great product people are I don't know. anyways your stuff's awesome i mean i wish uh i wish it was easier to get it out there into people's homes because i don't think people really realize especially the stick wood the how how right. easy it is to install and we get asked to do it as well we will do it some people don't have the tools you don't need a lot but you know like anything there's you know you can do it in a 
you can do a good job or you can do a great job. And if you don't think you can do a great job, that's fine. Reach out to someone who can for you. But maybe you're happy with good. Depends on you. Um, what else do we have to chat about? I guess I'm with mantles a little bit. Let's talk a bit about floating shelves. Because I know in my house, we just did a reno in our living room. And we built a, a, a fire, electric fireplace chase. We did a hearth below and didn't want to put a mantle on because it kind of broke it up a little bit. So this is a shot from my house. Now, these are temporary shelves. These are not from Urban Timber. These are some Ikea shelves. But we use the shelving. And this is my wife gets the credit. She's the decorating genius in our household. But we use that floating shelf um, to decorate for Christmas. And we can hang our stockings off there. And, you know, just so you know, we don't load the stockings. Or, sorry, Santa doesn't load the stockings on the shelf. We'll then take them off. And, and he leaves them on the couch so the kids can get to them while they're all packed full of sardines and other good things that the kids love right <laughs> anyway so that's a different way that you could use um a floating a shelf if you don't have a mantle right so as far as the shelves that you guys sell i mean what what materials is it very similar to what you have for your mantles or do you have different options there yeah we we have lots of fur i'm actually gonna walk back here into the uh to our our uh, sample room here and um, let me pull a couple things off the shelf. This is, this is our, oh, let me get, this thing is so heavy. Like, seriously, I could have set this up better. But, yeah, so this is our boxcar planks. Um, you know, Paul, you and I have talked about these before, of course. Yeah. But these are, uh, these are reclaimed out of old uh, rail cars. And um, this is a little sample board of it. But basically, we can cut that into, uh, into shelving. They come about 12 inches wide. So it makes for a very nice shelf. Usually with shelving, we do them, you know, three to four feet long. Uh, we also can do uh, some beautiful white oak, right? So we do the butcher block style. So that's really popular for mantles. Uh, live edge is really popular for mantles. Yeah. So, of course, that's that's where you get the uh, the bark portion of the tree kind of still left on of course we we take that bark off and sand it down but you can still see that exposed edge yeah, so we do a lot i'm those. a huge fan yeah. of live edge i think it's such a nice a nice touch yeah so it's it's like really honestly i saw somebody ask on your um on your uh your questions there about uh, picking picking tile before they pick a mantle right yeah so, and um i'll tell you here's a little plug for for a good friend of ours mutually uh but if you go to uh, River City Tile, um, they actually have uh, one of our mantle racks in their store. So you can pick your tile and your mantle at the same time. Yeah, well, it's, it's a good idea too, because that, that will certainly factor in to some extent, right? Because you need to be able to space it and is it going to need to result in, you know, cutting the tile back to fit or sure. not, right? So in some instances, we'll install the mantle first and tile up to it. And others will ask us to tile and then install the mantle over top of it, depending on the look that they want and whether they, um, you know, the problem with if you tiled after would be that if you ever had some sort of issue, you want to change the look. Well, now you, you're you going to have to retile too, because you'll have a, or find a piece of wood that fits perfectly in there. But yeah. Yeah. And some of that hand hewn material that we have is, is pretty wild. Um, so I think there's some, some, some of the wood that we carry, some of the beams that we have, uh, it's probably going to be easier to uh, tile after, or sorry, to to uh, install the mantle afterwards. But yeah, especially again, it, it's just on on the wood for sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tasha Main is asking, do you um, do floating shelves for kitchens? Thinking of matching kitchen shelves and mantle. Um, you, we do, and I'm sure yes, I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and often, yeah, we do lots of lots of kitchen shelves, yeah. Yeah, and one thing we've started doing with ours, and again, I've had my dad make a few, and we like we use a hollow shelf for our floating shelves in the kitchen, specifically when we want to add lighting to them. I don't have any pictures to show you now, but it's a super nice touch. And um, it can be done with a solid shelf too, but it's just a bit more, a bit more milling before you can install that uh, safely. So it's something that, uh, yeah, and you can certainly stop by Urban Timber and check out what they stock. And then you can design your, your shelves to match your, your mantle or, or vice versa. Um, 
Jan Elk done 12. So you're asking about start with the mantle before the tiles. I don't know if it's one before the other. I think you need to know them both before you install either. So I think you could either fall in love with your tile and then go and pick a, a wood for your mantle that, that uh, you know, complements that or, or vice versa. Okay. Um, I just, uh, sorry, Paul, I just got, I, yeah, we're, our showroom is clear here so I can come out here without a mask on. Um, I just thought maybe I'd just show everybody what we have kind of in stock for our mantles right now. You can get a look at that oh, nice. there. Yeah, so these ones, um, we have some dimensional timber. Um, this one's actually, what Paul was mentioning, um, this one's hollow. Uh, so this is kind of a boxed out mantle, but the edges are completely finished on them. Uh, this is live edge. This is a beautiful, nice live edge piece of maple. Right. And then these are those hand hewn ones that I was I was talking about. So you can see all the notches and everything in them. Those were all done by by hand and by axes and chisels about 200 years ago. So the majority of those are uh, are white oak. Yeah, and yeah. you can imagine if you installed that mantle first and had to tile up to it, you're not going to have a perfectly flat. Right. Um, base of the mantle to tile up to, so that'll become a lot of scribing and, and cutting for the tile setter. So that's where you want to make sure you plan it so that um, you know you know what you're up against, or at least your installer does. Uh, Wicked Blue shouting out there, and I guess this refers back to Jen's comment or question. When choosing your mantle, take into account the other wood tones in adjacent rooms, and that's that's true, right? There's so, there like any some colors don't work together, um, whether it be paint colors or furniture and paint, there are some wood tones to consider too, because some might be too close uh, or not close enough, I guess, right? So, um, all right, that's awesome. You have so much cool stuff in the showroom. Um, <laughs> so how, I guess, so let's talk about your showroom. How is it like for access right now if somebody wants to come by, how do they get in there? Yeah, we're, we're really strongly suggesting appointments. Uh, Ashley, myself and Leanne are here um you know uh through till uh till the end of the year but if you just send us an email or or on instagram and just set up an appointment then basically the showroom is is yours for that time period and uh you can come in and look at uh at everything that we have uh of course we're everybody has to mask up that's one of the rules right now but um we're keeping the uh, the showroom completely sanitized after everybody comes in uh you know we give it a once over and then we have the next appointment come in so Sounds awesome. I'm going to put your information up there. If anybody has any questions for Darren, of course, I'm cutting off half your information there, but um, there's their information over for Urban Timber. Look them up, give them a shout. Uh, book a time to go to the showroom, check out what they have. And uh, if you need help with an install, you can reach out to us. I'll see what I can do. We're, we're pretty busy up to Christmas, but uh, depending what you have, if it's simple, we might be able to fit it in. If you need a coach, I can maybe help guide you through it on a video call with some things to consider uh, as far as installing it. Um, Darren, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, as always, I love it. Thank you. Uh, good luck keeping up over there. Have a well talk to before Christmas, but hey, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody as well, and, uh, and stay safe, and uh, we'll get through this thing. You sure will. All right, thanks again. Appreciate it. Cheers. All right, bye-bye. Okay, so um, we had a giveaway item that I haven't talked about too much. So I'm going to pull up a shot of it here before I bring Rosalind on the show. We'll have a second giveaway item when Rosalind comes on. So um, my dad made, my dad owns a little company called Foster's Custom Woodcrafts. And uh, he's a one-man show, kind of a hobbyist. He's a retired cabinet maker, and he made uh, a bunch of charcuterie boards for me. I'm going to give one away on the show today. This one uh, is walnut and acacia. And to be entered into the draw, you just got to make a comment. The comment could be as simple as hello, could be a question, um, whatever it is, put it in there at the end of the show, we'll, we'll do the draw and, um, and we'll give it away. So I'm going to invite Rosalind onto the show here right away. And I'm just going to pull open her info. So if you don't know Rosalyn, um, so Rosalyn uh, owns Wicked Blue Interiors as well as Tipsy Palm. So she's been on the show before talking about different aspects of design. Um, we're going to talk specifically about Christmas decor. So if you're just joining the show now, 
I'm your host, Paul Foster, Contract Renovation the Custom Homes. This is the Art of Renovation Live. We're talking about uh, Christmas decor. This is our Christmas episode. So welcome, Rosalind. I'm going to send you an invite right now. Bear with me. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go. Okay. So Christmas decor, man, there's so many options. It's a bit different this year. Rosalind, welcome. Hi. Hey. And, and one thing that's different about it, I guess, is that we aren't really able to go into each other's homes. So that's changing a bit how we're decorating our homes to reflect our, you know, our, our style at Christmas, I guess. Everyone will do it a different way. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I guess take it away. I don't know what you want to start with here. You're standing in front of your mantle. So I guess that's a good place to start. Sure. Um, yeah. So I sent you a few pictures, so I kind of redid my mantle three different ways. And obviously, um, not really going out and sourcing a lot of new things this year. So um, I kind of, you know, repurposed a lot of stuff from around the house and kind of just played with some of the collections I already have. Um, obviously, I have a vintage store, so I have a little bit of a resource in my <laughs> store to play from. But um, also being a designer, I tend to collect far too many decor items. But anyhow, so the mantle that you're looking at, I did was... Um, I have a collection of pottery vases and I thought super fun to just sort of put a giant collection. So this could be pottery. You could use any type of vase. These could be glass vases, all different types of vases. Um, and then rather going than going out and buying a bunch of greenery, I just, you know, trimmed a few trees in my yard. Um, I'm extremely fortunate because the home I live in was originally built by a horticulturalist. So I have an amazing variety of greenery in my, in my backyard, but um, cedars, spruce, junipers, any of them, just cutting off small branches and putting them in smaller vessels. is a little less intimidating than doing, you know, the great big wreaths or the great big um, long, bows and things like that that can be a little bit harder to kind of construct so small and simple is great that actually the image that you're showing there those are are um artificial so i don't tend to always go for artificial but these i used in a uh, show home decor and i had a few left over so i had them in my in my decor basement and i think these are really impressive as how close they actually mm -hmm. are to um to the real thing had um, me fooled. Yeah, like here's the real thing. And then here's the, the artificial. Obviously the artificial are a little greener, but really all in all, pretty impressive. So um, sometimes we can get some pretty good ones. I think these were from Michaels. Um, so always good to kind of grab, you know, from Michaels as far as greenery goes. For but, sure. I guess um, I would say it's a great time to go for a walk. We were yeah. stuck kind of at home. So don't be shy. Get out there and go for a cruise. Don't cut down any trees in the ravine. You're going to no. have the... But we can forage. Have... Like, there's right. stuff on the ground that makes <laughs> but yeah, fabulous arrangements. Absolutely. You know, go And foraging. maybe, who knows, maybe you have an elderly neighbor that needs some help with pruning their trees, and you could lend them a hand and give them a trim for them. Um, absolutely. You know, there's lots, there's lots out there. There's lots of resources out there and things you can play with for sure. Yeah. Um, like pine cones. I, there's a million pine cones. We can decorate with pine cones. Absolutely. Like, my wife always takes my, our dog out for a walk and she comes back with these little branches and pine cones and stuff. And it always amazes me how it turns into a decoration in the house. Right. Yeah. And it's kind yeah. of I mean, you thing. just have to have fun and get creative with it. Play around with what you've, what you've kind of got in the house. Right. So, um, Going, so what picture have you got up there now? Oh yeah, so this is kind of what I've got going on behind me here. So just doing something a little bit different. So it doesn't always have to be also what we traditionally think of Christmas decor. Um, obviously Tipsy Palm, it's all about Palm Springs and, and you know, fun vintage stuff. And I also have a lot of tropicals in my home. So I trimmed some of my tropicals and threw them up in some vases. So I've got some Monstera, I've got some great big banana leaves. Fun stuff like that, just added sort of it's a bit more of a kitschy kind of fun play on that. Um, I had this banner, but this would be a super easy DIY project too to do any kind of banner. I know my daughter just did one that said fa la 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 and hung that across her apartment. I threw some pom poms on there. Nice. You know, simple fun decor, <laughs> and it's fun to do them with the kids. Like we're all looking for some different activities to do right now as well that can kind of. You know, string some popcorn for your tree. I don't, there's so many fun things that we can do that maybe we 
been too busy in years past to do. So I think it's, you know, it is time to kind of play with your decor on your mantle, your Christmas decor and have some fun with it. Sure, I, I agree. You know, it would be fun. If I look on that picture of the mantle, I see your giveaway item sitting there. Yeah, it's sitting up behind me here as well. Oh. So yeah, I've got- uh, Here it, it is. Works perfectly for this. So, so tell I us a bit about it. Filled with some Christmas balls, some little vintage Christmas balls in the in the basket. But it's, yeah, it's a pedestal milk glass um, bowl. So this probably is from the 1950s. So it's a beautiful, um, beautiful dish. It, I mean, I use things like this all year round. There's a photo of it I just styled with a bit of greenery tucked in it, and again some Christmas balls. But it works all year round for all sorts of different things. I don't know, milk glass is one of kind of those classic things that fits into everybody's decor. Yeah, it's super nice. Um, mm. So yeah, to be entered in the draw, you're just gonna make a comment. If you have a question, you want some, you need some advice, like shout out to us right now in the in the questions, and we'll answer and address your question right now. But to be entered in the draw, just make it make a comment, and we'll draw for this and for this uh, charcuterie board at the end of the show. I had someone said they love the handles. It is pretty slick, actually. It's nice. Yeah, to it's have really some... nice. The inlay is beautiful on it. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. It's actually a uh, bunch of recycled material too, which is really cool. Yep. So, way to go, Dad. Reuse. Okay, right. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pull up some more of these shots here that you've sent over and we'll talk a bit about, we're kind of going just all over the place here based on whatever photos I pull up at this stage because uh, they don't show up on my, on my feed in an organized fashion. So okay. I guess we'll just talk a bit about these images for now. And if anybody has sure. any questions or comments, please fire away. So this is when I pulled to talk a bit about modern farmhouse. So I'm finding that a lot of our clients uh, right now are really um, loving the modern farmhouse look. Um, it fits a lot of well into the styles of our and the construction of our homes here. And it's sort of, um, it's nice and cozy, but it's still clean and modern. So it's that great blend of the two things. So that's a super fun um, kind of look. So when you were showing earlier that, um, the I've got this big crock from Medelta Pottery, so a big vintage crock, and it's <laughs> filled with the greenery, but that's totally like a kind of a modern farmhouse look. And then on the mantle, I just took this vintage wool scarf and wrapped it around the bottom, right? So you could tuck that on a front console table, you could tuck it beside a chair. So easy, so simple, and it just gives you kind of that modern farmhouse look. Yeah, you yeah. Know, the, so if anybody look. joining the show now, this is the Art of Renovation Live. This is our Christmas episode. We're talking about Christmas decor and we're talking specifically about modern farmhouse right now. And here's a couple of good examples of how you could achieve that look. And I guess like, where does that come from modern farmhouse? Like, you, What's the background behind that? I mean, it sounds self-explanatory, but I'm sure there's more to it than I think. Where does, where does modern farmhouse come from? Is that what you're yeah. asking? It's just a, a modern twist on a traditional look in that sense or? Yeah, I think there was, I mean, it's just how design kind of ends up evolving, right? So we were kind of doing, um, a lot of people were doing these really kind of stark homes, quite modern, quite quite clean lines. And then the other side of it was we were seeing kind of this really farmhouse look. And so when people don't land in one category necessarily or the other, it tends to create joined design styles um so it's still got that really nice clean look but it's got um, a lot more texture than a modern house may have it's got um, a lot more layered elements fabrics but really subtle colors still um so it's just yeah when we see one trend that it's you know kind of polar opposite to another trend often they'll start to join in the middle somewhere right yeah, it makes total sense and i think it's like it's like food. You get a fusion of foods, and it's just amazing what you can get. And I think design's the same way. Yeah. Right? And I There's think no ultimately, one defined style, right? right. No one and defined thing you have to fit. In. Totally. If you if you love the sea and the mountains, well, you can merge them together, and you can get a pretty amazing look in your home. And that's something where, you know, I mean, some people are creative and can express that themselves. Others need a hand. If you need a hand, you should call Rosalind because she's really good at that. So, um. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my goal is to figure out what your style, what your likes are and help you define that, right? It's not my style that I need to tell you about. It's to help you figure out your style, right? Right. That's exactly so there's why. There's another beautiful modern farmhouse look. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I guess just I used to do the design for our projects. And at one point, my wife was like, Paul, they're all starting to look the same because I kept <laughs> doing my style. I like I like grayscale. I, I do lots of gray, white, black and I like it fairly clean. And then 
you know, we started working with some designers like you and it's amazing to see the change now, how the people's houses become truly an expression of them mm -hmm. or at least of their interest, right? And that's, it's a fantastic well, how thing. how they live too, right? It's like we have to take into account how they live. If you've got, you know, small kids and families, high gloss white on your cabinets isn't always the best choice. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, I like, this is a nice image. Um, here's another nice live edge mantle. Yeah, that's like, that's a beautiful example of, um, you know, what Urban Timber can do for you as far as mantle goes. Um, yeah. The selection of, of wood products that they have is, I mean, it's, it's a lovely shop to go into. Oh, I love this one. I loved this picture because I thought what an interesting way to use your greenery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just simply it's kind of offset kind of a bit more whimsical, but still so clean and still kind of that modern farmhouse look. Yeah, yeah, it's very sharp, absolutely. Um, and some interesting little shots here. Oh, <laughs> this is my next craft project. <laughs> All right. So these, these are called putts houses because um, you, you're putzing is basically why they're called that. But there's all of these um, uh, kits that you can download and they give you templates and basically you create these miniature houses and you create a village of basically atomic ranch houses so i'm imagining <laughs> that hopefully this weekend i could get to it and then i could add some of these puts houses to yeah. my tipsy palm mantle and it would give it a bit more of that palm springs kind of look um we'll see they seem a little bit intimidating it's been a while since i've crafted quite like oh yeah like <laughs> well they're, they're super cool for sure yeah they're really fun yeah here's another nice this is fun for sure. Yeah, fun, right? Like not your traditional Christmas colors, not your traditional kind of Christmas um, patterns either, but it gives you that holiday vibe. So if you kind of look at the top of the photo, what I really like about this one, it's kind of hard to see, but the little, the colored images on top are actually plexi Christmas trees. Oh yeah. So they're just triangles. They're made out of plexi, but they're on all those different colors, right? So again, a non-traditional way to show it, you know, a traditional Christmas element. Yeah, super cool. And I mean, merry and bright, that's the perfect description of what that is, right? Absolutely. There's yeah. no there's no doubt that's Christmas themed, but yeah. you're right, not the traditional colors. Um, let's talk about the giveaway item again, because it's mm -hmm. awesome. And I think it would really look nice in someone's home. So if you'd like to win this today, just enter a comment, ask a question. We'll keep it, we'll keep it easy for you. So far we got a Roz, Roz is the best by Kendra. <laughs> PLB. Kendra is 100% my best tipsy palm client. That's probably why. All right. Well, there you go. That'll do it. Cat Jan 8 said, cute. There you go, Cat. You're, you're in. Um, so, yeah, all you have to do is comment and you're entered into the draw. So, um, oh, Alicia's in. Alicia, love this. All right. <laughs> what else we got here? Actually, you know, I like this picture that Urban sent over of their stick wood and, and this star on there. And I guess. You know, it shows me a lot about like how, what lighting can do within your space too. And what are your thoughts on lights? Like I know that I, um, a friend of mine posted a picture of, uh, I don't know, it was some, it was an exterior of a home recently. And it was, there was always that thing I heard, you know, it's, it's quality, not quantity. And this like destroyed that theory. There were so many lights in no apparent order that it was just beautiful. There was just like complete quantity of lighting and i know that, huh. that probably right now you're like little hairs are rising up in your neck like oh my god that's not how we do it but what are your thoughts how to light your space like i i, I don't really know i mean i know when it comes to led pot lights and things of that nature but are we talking holiday decor or all well, the time de all the time lighting sorry no no holiday holiday, lighting? holiday decor lighting um Let's see if I have so any yeah, i'm a bit more of the um you know, stick to one or two types of lighting, especially for your exterior. So I do find sometimes when, you know, someone lights their exterior and they've got an old string of this kind of lights and then they've got a string of multicolored lights and then they've got the blue old LED lights. And now they've got the warm LED. It just becomes, nice. you can't even look at it. It's um, <laughs> too hard on the eye. I, it, anyways, it, it, it gets my OCD going. Um, so I think it's, yeah, less is more when you're talking about exterior lighting. Like I love a brightly lit house, don't get me wrong, but I do think keeping it, um, you know, to a couple of different kinds. And that's what one of the trends this year is, is your front entry, right? So yeah. we're all out walking more, we're all out around our neighborhoods more, because that's kind of what we can do. So 
I'm loving how many more of my neighbors have lights up this year, how many more have decorated their front landings. It's beautiful. It's, it's a lovely thing to walk during the day or in the evening. So a super fun way to decorate, right? So Absolutely. Let me yeah. just reintroduce the show quickly here. So if you're just tuning in, this is the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovation and Custom Homes. I have Rosalind from Wicked Blue Design on the show talking about Christmas decor. Right now, specifically, we're talking about front entries and exterior because this is a big part of the change this year you'll see more people putting attention into their entryways or their porches because we aren't able to go into each other's homes so uh, this is a great example of you know it, it's it's beautiful it yeah. jumps out at you and it's like merry christmas yeah or happy lovely. holidays and i mean and that's all really simple to do right there's just christmas balls i mean those ones are larger in scale um but some of the dollar stores do have those michael's does have them um but then it's really just ribbon and garland and you can, you know, dress up your front entry quite simply. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is a fun one, right? So there's kind of just using lanterns, a set of skis, a basket of logs, mm -hmm. right? Gives you that holiday feel, gives you that warm, cozy feel. Um, but those are all things we probably have down in our crawl space, right? So. Absolutely. And if you're not into all the colors and everything, this is a really subtle way to add a nice touch. And it's like, nice i guess yeah, if you're not into all the holiday colors um that's why that modern farmhouse look is so great right because it adds the texture and it adds um warmth and coziness to your space without kind of adding all the all the bling mm -hmm. absolutely there's another another option here again so good use those mats are really easy to make too so if you have like a plain size old mat um it's really easy to cut a template of letters and just spray paint Oh, wow. Um, whatever you want the saying to be on your mat. So it can be, you know, if you, if you could print, there's templates you can print from online, um, you know, that kind of give it to you in the right scale. But I mean, you could make it whatever you wanted or, or just a giant circle and then paint a Christmas ball on top and kind of just dress up your mat, like change it up. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. I never even thought about that. I know I've, I've seen these things for sale and they aren't, they aren't bad. We bought a couple for the office here just to cheer it up a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, they weren't bad. You got them in Home Depot or something like that. They were 10 bucks, but. Uh, yeah, there's like lots that. of like, um, there's that great Christmas market down at the Army and Navy right now. Um, oh, really? And so there's, uh, at the Army, Navy and White Ave, there's a huge Edmonton Christmas market with all different local vendors. And I know there's a girl that um, custom makes these and so selling them there as well, right? So supporting local, supporting a small artist. Yeah. Great thing to do this year. Let's talk about that for a second, because Aside from this show, we're also doing a little campaign right now called Pay It Forward YEG. Mm -hmm. So me and um, 11 other business owners kind of pool some some funds together to buy a bunch of gift cards for some local businesses that were struggling as a result of the COVID regulations, right? And it's really getting some great momentum. And it's so nice to see these small businesses and, and the people coming forward, you know, naming their favorite small business in their community. And it's amazing. It's opened my eyes to so many more businesses that are out there. And I think... Absolutely. Like if you need decor, you need Christmas gifts, like go check out your local mom and pop type shops. Yeah. Go to the market, you know, I mean, um, support local. This is the time to do it because a lot of people are not doing well in their businesses. And this is where lots of little things like this come up. You want to achieve some of this look that, you know, Rosalind sent over, then I think that's a lot of stuff you could do at home. Go buy some crafts. Yeah. You need a hand, then you can reach out to somebody who can help you with these things like that doormat, right? And you yeah. can imagine you could put your family name on that doormat if you wanted to. Exactly. And um, Etsy is a great resource as well for local artists. So you can narrow down your search to be close to home. Like Etsy is a global um, website of artisans, but you can narrow that search down. And so a lot of local artists, a lot of local creators are on Etsy. That's kind of where they have their online shop. So that's a really great place to find local people that can make things or create things for you. Um, you know, just if, you, if we're not you know, all getting out and going into the shops right now. So even a lot of people have switched to good online formats. Pick up the phone. I bought a record um, the other day from Blackbird on White Ave and I didn't want to go into the shop. So I called them, I paid for it and he opened my trunk. He ran it out, threw it in and away I went, <laughs> right? So we can still shop local. We can make it happen, you know, just. Absolutely. Yeah, it just takes a little extra step. For sure. And, you know, I think 
you know, whether you need to do a whole bunch of shopping to achieve the look you're going for, or whether you need to do a bit of foraging out in the, in the forest, I think it's all healthy to, you know, to get out and explore a little bit in wilderness, see what you can bring into your home and then look around and see what small businesses you could support too. And I'm sure there's many creative ways to, you know, to actually procure the item without having to go into the store at this point. And, um, yeah, reuse first, right? Like see what you've got, move things around. Um, this is a fun kitschy. What do you think yeah. of the pink tree? It looks like uh, cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's pretty. It definitely jumps out at you. It's very Palm Springs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I, I love the couch. Yeah. The light. You know, nice yeah. stuff for sure. Now, let's see here. I was I was earlier. I mentioned a little bit of what we do at our house with with hanging our stockings off our floating shelf. And again, just another simple way. I know. Um, uh, my wife loves shop chop, chop shop. Chop and, chop. Yeah, she she, she, she loves these little trees. We got like a million little trees in her house, and uh, and they're they're really cute. It's just I I can see she's got a tree addiction. She might need some help. She's watching now. No. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Keep collecting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really nice stuff, you know. And uh, it's another great little shop you can get out there and support. And and yeah. What else can we chat about here? We talked about farmhouse, modern farmhouse, some vintage holidays, tipsy palm style. So I'll show you another one of the, um, so in that modern farmhouse, the full mantle picture, there was a couple of, um, of pictures that I framed. So I just wanted to show you kind of how I did these. Okay. Um, Cause one of the things with modern farmhouse is definitely like layering, um, layering pictures on top of each other, doing stuff yeah. like that. So these, um, I created these images. So this one's just got a tree on it. Um, really kind of simple. This one's just got uh, just plaid, it says Merry Christmas on it. These are eight by, they're normal printer paper that I just printed on my paper, on uh-huh. my printer, sorry. Um, and I plopped them over top of the existing pictures that I had and I'll just keep them up for the Christmas season and then they'll go back to being what they were before after the holidays so i didn't have i you know paid for ink that's about it so i don't know if people are familiar with a website called canva um it's a marketing website and you can create all sorts of different um any kind of marketing so you can create instagram posts on it you can create you know um, great prints like this you can do all sorts of different things so that's a really fun way too you can create custom christmas cards for your family and friends nice um you can do them so that they're, you know, could be sent out in an email or that you can print them, but it's just, yeah, there you can see them sort of layered up on the mantle. So it's that's a great idea. a really and you, easy way to reuse. Yeah, totally. Just reuse your frame and then you can, re, you know, pull those out after Christmas and there you go. Mm-hmm. There were some really cool ones I found on Etsy too that were a bit more the, the uh, Palm Springs look. They were like retro Christmas trees and stuff like that. Um, and so on Etsy, there's lots of, uh, you know, people that are graphic designers that create printables. So it costs about $6. You pay them, they send you a link that you can download. Um, and then you can print in whatever size and scale you want. So if you wanted to do them really big, you send that off to Michael's or I mean, sorry, to Staples and they print it up in a poster size for you or whatever it is, but it only costs you, you know, it's under $30 for kind of custom artwork. Well, that's, that's, that's a great option for sure. Mm-hmm. Beauty. Mm-hmm. just checking out some of these picks here so yeah i mean i guess it's i mean i wouldn't again layering maybe this isn't layering but um you know it's such a nice eclectic mix of stuff that I, often for me i'll see something and it makes a first impression of some sort it's like oh that's really pretty without really understanding what's in it and how to obtain that look right and i think um this is a good example of that where there's a bunch of different items in there that work together very well yeah, so you can just take different vessels, different sizes, right? And, and just sort of put them kind of one in front of the other and create different heights and different shapes with it. And um, this one, I just tucked a little Christmas ball in there. This one's just got a twig, but they don't need to be like overflowing or super full. Um, you know, if you don't, I covered the whole entire mantle because I have that many, but just doing a group of three or four of them is just as effective, right? The thing with greenery is it's really sculptural. So it gives you, um, it just gives you a lot of interest when you put it up into your spaces, right? It creates something really unique because no piece is the same. Absolutely. I guess I'll I'll pull this shot up again because it 
kind of shows you how you can have this greenery off to one side and you only have a few other pieces that work really well with it and it ultimately it balances out this is this is super cool i really like this actually it's yeah i know i love the way that's layered and it's really easy like if you buy the um so if you're going to create something like this it's probably a good idea to go to um, your hardware store and buy the bundle um just because you want your pieces to be the same size you want them to be nice and long um, and I don't know that I'm willing to kind of prune my tree to get, get that effect. Okay. So, um, but they're really easy you, to um, assemble. You just layer them on top of each other, overlapping each piece, you know, maybe six to eight inches. And you just need a little bit of garden wire. And you just mm -hmm. wire kind of those two ends together and then just keep going with it. And then you create this long, you know, garland. And it's easy to kind of twist and shape like that. Yeah. To get it to hang on your mantle or, you know, any kind of holiday decor, the 3M hooks work really, really well. Right, absolutely. Because um, obviously you don't want to put a permanent nail in there or anything kind of that's permanent. So using 3M hooks to kind of get things to stay where you want them to is a great trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great idea for sure. All right, well, let's talk our last call on our giveaway items here. So we have a couple things. We have uh, this, oh, where'd it go? Here it is. Um, we have this great bowl from Roslyn. This, Beautiful. I guess, is from Tipsy yeah. Palm. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, sure is. 1950s-ish, we assume. Ish. Yeah, you never know. It's 1940s, 50s. Yeah. So it's, Does it's, it come it's with an all antique. The, it's an old one. Does it come with the decorations inside? No. no? <laughs> all right, decorate it yourself. She's yeah. giving you an awesome You get to bowl. create what you want to put inside. Right, right. So I've used these, um, like, I've put you know, side dishes, my, you know, peas on Christmas dinner in these, like they can be used for whatever you want them to be. Right. So it's yeah. decor, but they're also really functional. They're a great size dish. Yeah. No doubt. I can see that full of jello, jello and vodka. There you go. Jello. <laughs> are, you, are you an aspic guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anyhow, all jokes aside, um, if you want to win the bowl, just make a comment and you'll be entered into the draw. We also have a charcuterie board that uh, my dad made up. It's uh, walnut and acacia. It's from some recycled wood. It's beautiful. And that's up for grabs too. So just um, enter a comment, a question. Uh, we got about eight minutes left in the show. So if you have any questions, fire away. And we're happy to, we'll talk about you. Whatever you, you need some advice, what gift to get your husband for Christmas. Happy to help. <laughs> so, Paul, are you more of a, um, do you like your Christmas decor and your tree to be kind of like perfect and like all matchy? Or are you more of a whimsical Charlie Brown kind of guy? Well, I'll show you our tree. I have a couple of pictures of it here. So it's, it's well, I mean, my, my wife decorates the tree. Like I'm, I put the star on top because it requires a ladder and some wire. So that's my job. Right. I help her put the lights on because it need it takes two, but I like seeing all the kids' arts and crafts on it. Like I was yeah. always a fan of like the popcorn string, arts and crafts. That's and a craft we, that's on my list this year. <laughs> yeah, and then we like we also then have lots of these different little ornaments that have kind of a story that we got from a craft market or is given to us by a family member, and there's usually some meaning behind it. Like you know, we love Christmas. It's something that like my kids are six and eight years old. So it's so fun still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, even when the kids are older, I mean, we just we, we like it. We're Christmassy, right? We, yeah. we enjoy yeah. the time of year. And so, uh, you know, I mean, for me, I'm pretty, pretty random about um, how my decor would be. I give a shout out to my wife because she does a fantastic job. Her house looks wonderful and it, I can't take any credit for it. Sure. I'll put the shelf on the wall. I'll build the fireplace, hearth all right. that stuff but as far as making it look pretty that's you know that's where she comes in uh -huh. yeah i'm definitely um i'm definitely a full-on charlie brown tree girl so um i'm fortunate my in-laws have an acreage and so that's where we get our christmas tree every year so we, we call ourselves the griswolds and we go hiking out into the bush and <laughs> we get our christmas tree and um i'm going to take the camera and show you my giant charlie brown tree this year yeah, because awesome. it's um Let's see if you can see this. It is right. massive because <laughs> I have a vaulted ceiling right here, but it is so wonky. Nice. <laughs> Love it. You need a couple of giant balls that pull some of the branches down and weird uh, things. And yeah. Well, I had to, um, I did have to actually, 
yeah, move some of the ornaments around after my son and husband helped me decorate because the he was he was definitely pulling a Charlie Brown and he was leaning a lot. But yeah, I love the wonky tree. I'm like you. I have um, all the kids crafted ornaments throughout the years. Um, Santa always put an ornament in their stocking, so it's super fun to decorate the tree that way because we can pull them out and we remember when we got them or who's was who's and yeah, it just sort of makes for a fun. Um, you know, it's your tradition, the tree. Yeah. Absolutely. I actually so I quite like this. Isn't that incredible? That one's so cool. <laughs> it's just like, looks like a, I don't know, some stuff, I'm stepping from outer space, some sort of uh, <laughs> nebula or something. Yeah. Really cool. And those are, I mean, I don't know if those are felt or I can't tell, obviously, but um, where did Yeah, this... I mean, making things like that, like, it's like I made these little tiny pom-poms just for this, but um, pom-poms are probably one of the easiest DIY crafts you can do. You need a ball of yarn and a pair of scissors. So, yeah. um, you know, you can do giant pom-poms like that. And uh, when we were even showing those front entry photos earlier, if you don't have those big Christmas balls, you could do those as giant pom-poms if you have the yarn or have some string, you know, you can kind of switch things out as well, right? It doesn't always have to be exactly as you see in the photo. And that Pinterest is super fun to jump onto to look at all the inspiration of different holiday decor pictures. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's such a, it's, it's just so random and so cool, the variety there, you know, like, um, yeah. it's funny that uh, fireplace screen reminds me of a turkey. <laughs> I have that fireplace screen. Oh, really? It's a peacock. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Of course it is. Uh, my, my wife's eyes are rolling back in her head right now as we speak. <laughs> I can see the turkey, but it's a peacock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, we have a winner. We have one winner announced so far. Um, just a dose of love. And I happen to know this handle because they just won a gift card on our giveaway yesterday for Pay It Forward YAG. So congrats. You, you're, Amazing. you're lucky. Look at you winning two days in a row. So we'll say that's going to be uh, the bowl. Right, nineteen fifties pedestal milk glass bowl, compliments of Tipsy Palm, and the next winner will be for the charcuterie board. And I'll just wait for that message to come in, and then I'll announce the winner there. Um, if anybody has any questions, comments, fire away. Roz, you did a great job decorating your mantle in a variety of ways and helping me with some content for this. So thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we got a few projects cooking together in the new year, so that'll be lots of fun. And uh, yeah. it's always great to see how you can pull out that client's expression of self within their within their design and their selections and all that stuff. So it's Thank it's you. really and neat. one of the great projects we have is actually with uh, also paired with uh, urban urban timber. Absolutely, with the stick mm -hmm. wood. Yeah, those bathrooms are going to be some nice uh, nice portfolio shots for sure. Yeah, um, very be very nice. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, um, Keon the Heartist. Keon the Heart, what? <laughs> oh, the artist, sorry, I, my goodness. Keon the Artist, you're the winner of the charcuterie board. I think that's Keon from Vignettes, maybe. It's only Keon oh, yeah. I know, but I could be wrong. So I'll hit you up with a direct message here after the show, uh, both you and Just a Dose of Love, and, and uh, we will uh, get in contact. I would imagine they could do a porch pickup for the, yep. the glass bowl and then we'll yeah. do this you can come by my office to pick up the charcuterie board in the new year or maybe before christmas actually you might want to use it sooner Probably. than later so we can come get it this week um yeah Perfect. Right. let's do a last look for questions here actually i saw one earlier i don't know if we have time for this one it was referring to from kendra was that a curtis jeer above the blue couch Let's see if I can find that picture real fast. That was the oh, pink tree shot. Oh, she's referring to one of those photos in it. Um, I don't know. I didn't see. Uh, nope, yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> now I'm zooming in. Sorry, you got my face Who, really close up. Who's there. Curtis Gear? Um, he's like yeah. a, a metal sculptress from, I think, the 60s, 70s, maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, some really, really incredible pieces. I think Kendra owns two of them, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, I'll give a shout out to a friend of mine, Capensis Metalwork. She does some really, really amazing metalwork too. Um, anyways, we'll try. I'm trying to get her on the show, but she's not having it so far. It's like me putting her on the spot, I guess. But uh, hopefully, in the new year, I can get her out here. We'll show some of her stuff, and and uh, there's there's some really, really amazing artists and and makers out there. Again, absolutely, yeah. and. 
you know, I would say go out into your community, go search out small businesses, support them. If you need help with design, please get a hold of Rosalind Wicked Blue Interiors. She does a great job. I can vouch for her. She does lots of work for us. Um, Rosalind, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Great to have you back on here again. Of course. Yeah, it was awesome. If you have questions about a renovation, you need a hand, reach out to me. This is Paul from Contact I'll Renovations. For Paul. He also does great work. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Thank you very much. Have hey, a great happy week. holidays. Oh, I'm back on at 3 o'clock to announce the winners from the YEG Pay It Forward. So tune in at 3 if you want to hear if Perfect. you want anything. Take care. Hey, bye. bye.